Well, thank you so much for joining us and for remaining with us on the program this morning. Let's focus on slow growth. The GDP fell uh, quarter on quarter by 1.78 percentage points to 2.25 percent in the third quarter of this year from 3.54 percent recorded in quarter two. What does this mean? And because this information was disclosed on Thursday by the NBS, citing the base effects of the recession and the challenging economic conditions that have impeded productive activities as reasons for the deceleration in growth rate. Let's make some sense of these with Boniface Chizia as well as Oladotun Mabinori, both of them economists. Thank you both for joining us this morning. Let me begin with you, uh, Mr. Chizia. Yes, thank Help you us much. make sense of those figures, those revelations, and the implications of it. Well, I think uh, the implications is that uh, we don't have, uh, what that tells you is the essence of growth in the economy. And so uh, it says growth is, is not what it should be. Uh, so it has also implications. And uh, in fact, it's aligned with the fact that uh, NBS does release a, a figure to tell us that 130 million Nigerians uh, are, are, are living in poverty. So I said, well, that's what it says. Because uh, when what normally would happen is that uh, your, the growth rate and population growth rate, your growth rate in your economy should be greater than the population growth rate if you must have uh, development quality of life is sustained, and so on and so forth. Now, where you have your growth rate is probably at par or below, as it is today. Now, what that says is that uh, the poverty in the land is, is writ large. So I think that's exactly what it is. So there's poverty, there's hardship. We all feel it. We all know it. You know, you just talked about world crisis. There's crisis everywhere. You know, I, I just employed, uh, tried to employ some, some people, and I could see the poverty. It's, it's more like Russian. The beer driver, somebody comes to you for interview, and he's going back, he doesn't have money to pay for his transport. So I think that uh, we need to be very careful. Uh, poverty is, is terrible. Uh, we need to be very careful, but we're careful with election 2023 because uh, we must get it right. If we don't get it right, we are headed for perdition. Hmm. Well, let me ask uh, Mr. Amabinori the same question of the implication of these numbers. Is this something we saw coming or is something that just happened on us? Um, good morning, Mr. Makede, and then uh, great to be here once again. Uh, it's not um, born out of a, it's not a surprise to we, the economists, uh, really, but it's something that um, has been predicted before now. Uh, we are entering election, electionary period, where there will be a whole lot of um, unproductive, uh, there will be a whole lot of funds in the economy uh, not uh, chasing uh, productive uh, activities. So that will surely fuel inflation. And there are implications that will also lead to what we have right now. And the issue of oil theft has also contributed largely to what we have right now. Thank God for other sectors of the economy that are, are very, very resilient to uh, economic um, uh, down, downturn. Uh, sectors like agriculture, like um, uh, 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 ICT and the likes. So if not for those ones, the challenge that we had in our uh, oil sector would have actually made this um, our current uh, GDP to worsen than this. So these are things that have been predicted. These are things that we have seen coming, but uh, the government has not done uh, enough to to avert it or to prevent it from happening. So essentially, you're saying that it's something that we could have prevented. We could have, it's it's avoidable. What could we have done that we left undone? Uh, for instance, um, the. Um, CBN continuing to tighten some, most of their monetary policies by doing what they call contractionary monetary policies. Uh, embarking on this means that uh, you are killing uh, manufacturing sectors in the economy, uh, manufacturing sector in the economy. And as you can see, the manufacturing sector declined compared to what we had quarter on quarter. But if you compare whether quarter on quarter or year on year, the manufacturing sector declined greatly. And these are, are job elastic um, sectors. These are sectors creating jobs for millions of Nigerians. So a case where the basis, uh, the um, MPR, that's monetary policy rate, was increased from 14, from 11% to 11.5% to 15.5%. And just two days ago, CBN governor again still announced an increase from 15.5% to 16.5%. So these are contractionary monetary policies that will make the economy to, to, to contrast the more. 
So we uh, find CBN is trying to rein in on inflation, but the inflation, the type of inflation we have is not what we call monetary uh, inflation. It is fiscal inflation. It's not money-induced inflation. That is not a demand pool inflation. It's cost push inflation. So the more money, the, the CBN continues to tighten the monetary policies, the more we are having uh, the manufacturing sector and the agricultural sector and some other sectors that are largely dependent on monetary policies to be contrasting. And when they are contrasting, we surely have the effect on GDP as we have it right now. So what we are going, what we see right now is predictable and is also avoidable. Uh, Mr. Chizie, uh, would you please yes, uh, kindly yeah. connect the three dots you mentioned earlier for us again? You mentioned population growth, you mentioned growth rate, and you also mentioned poverty rate. Can you please connect those three dots for us again? Well, I think that the first thing to say is that uh, it's not a tap. You know, what's happening now is not a tap. It's not something that uh, you just turn the tap, and then the thing is uh, that you have a solution. You're talking about growth in the economy, and growing the economy the totality of the goods and services you have within your economy. And so there are many things that are wrong within the system, which you cannot correct overnight. And, um, and essentially, if you also factor in what's happening in the environment, you factor in the uh, Russian, Ukraine war, and so on, that has, uh, you know, uh, um, caused a spike in inflation across uh, all economy, most economies in, in, in the world. Uh, you, you bring that in, you bring in COVID and so on. And, you know, we were just trying to get out of that uh, COVID recession, you know, lockdown that was caused by, by COVID. So when I listen to comments, you know, it's not something that you could just happen. You have to get your acts together, I'm doing the right thing before you can have growth. So even when the gentleman talks about uh, interest rates and so on and so forth, the central bank will have to fight inflation. And one of the things that causes, uh, uh, that undermines well-being uh, well in, in an economy in the country is, uh, is inflation. Even you want to buy gas, and gas is going from, 3,000 to 11,000 naira. You can't, this is not even there. It's not available. Uh, 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 available. When you're talking about uh, uh, other services we have uh, they are beyond reach, then of course you must have hardship. But people don't have the money. They don't have some, even if you have your income, your income does not, it's not elastic enough you know, to accommodate, accommodate those increases. So I think that's uh, the problem. You know, so like I said, I said earlier on, the Bureau of Statistics tells us you have one. 30 million people living in poverty. So I think those are some of the, the, the challenges. You know, oh. we have to get our hands together. We have, there's many things we are doing that, we're, that is not correct. Mm -hmm. And it's been there for a long time. You know, something that just happened there yesterday, then you say, look, let's do this or do that, and let's correct it. Even well, if you take the rate of, rate of uh, uh, exchange rate, for instance, you know, which okay. people are talking about. Well, Mr. Chizia, okay. you, you, you heard uh, uh, Mr. Mavinori, the co-panelist this morning, talking about the role the CBN has been playing in all of these. Mm -hmm. But then there are those who also point to the fact that one of the major reasons for these issues, uh, this um, unstable economic uh, terrain, so to speak, is because Nigeria does not produce. Nigeria is not a producing, but a consuming country. Is that yeah. anything significantly to do with it? Well, it, uh, well we've, been, we've been, one of the problems we've had, if you listen to those who are campaigning for our votes, you know, uh, some are promise, promising us that really we, we must get out of, we must begin to produce. And this is very important. If you don't produce, you know, you have issues. Uh, you take, for instance, agriculture, social and agriculture, look at the insurrection in the land. It's been there for a long time. And it's not getting better. Now, people are not going to the farms. They can't, they can't plant uh, when they're supposed to plant. They can't harvest. And then, so there will be no magic about it. And so when you don't have produce, you know, uh, when you're supposed to have them and there's scarcity, the prices will go high. So there are also issues, you know, so you need to address insecurity. Mm. So it's important. You have to, you know, you, recently we have flooding. Uh, flooding also will undermine the agricultural um, value chain. So I think those are the, some of the challenges. We, we need to get them addressed. And that's why I don't did the post. I just say in that post that we must get, February is not too far, we must get the election correct. Otherwise, we'll all be in a deep hole. Mm. Well, Mr. Mavinori, um, <clears throat> you mentioned some sectors the other time that are helping to get things better. Um, that, you know, that, that they are the sectors that seem to uh, have kind of helped to mitigate the, if the seriousness of the effects of uh, the figures that the MBS has released. Could they have done better? I ask that because there are those who, are in, who operate in several of these sectors, and one of the major challenges they talk about is the regulations in the sectors, the ICT regulation, 
agriculture regulation, real estate regulation, and all of those things that the authorities seem to make the business environment a little cause for them, not very, very um, easy for people to do business. Is that, is that of any significance in the challenges we have economically? Um, definitely. The, 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 the policies, so there are some policies that are actually favorable, that is they, are, they have assisted positively to this um, uh, um, current growth that we've had, and there are some that are very, very um, inimical, that are negative to the growth that we are we, are, we should have had in, in, in the sector. Uh, let's take, for instance, the ICT sector, which uh, contributed 15.35% to GDP, even above uh, um, other sectors that we are actually looking at, and that we, we, we are expecting to, to, do better, to do better. So these are sectors that should be well, highly regulated, and at the same time, while we're regulating them, we shouldn't um, choke or we shouldn't um, um, uh, strive on, I mean, sorry, uh, choke this, 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 uh, the drivers of the sector to, to, to death, because uh, there's a sector that is job elastic. What I'm particular about this sector is that um, we have sectors in the economy that are job elastic. Unlike, um, petrol, uh, sorry, unlike oil and gas. Oil and gas is a sector in the economy that um, uh, is driven majorly by equipment. If you have very few people employed, even if the, the sector grows, the oil sector grows by 10%, you, might, you realize that might not contribute or it might not translate to 10% increase in employment. It could be as a result of an um, introduction of a new uh, uh, capital intensive way of, of getting things done. But if you look at sectors like ICT, a growth in ICT sector means, a gro uh, means growth in many other areas of the economy. Because if you get broadband, for instance, very accurately, uh, very well, or in case where we have um, uh, the, the data consumption, that is our mobile data, in terms of what we pay per day, reducing. Because there are so many sectors, there are so many uh, small businesses, even large businesses that depend largely on on data so a case where that sector for instance gets it right it will have what they call ripple effect or cascade effect on other sectors of the economy on other sectors of the economy so like the smes and we know that smes is the engine room of um, any any economic growth so by the time the ict has is, is gotten well and and then the it's it has a ripple effect on the economy the economy will surely uh, 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 will increase so that's what we're talking about the non-oil sector of the economy that government should pay attention to them and leave and then uh, and leave uh, sorry reduce the, the energy and the, the um, effect that the 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 the, the, oil, the, the, the energy they are putting on the oil sector. For instance, the oil sector contributes less than less than seven percent to the to the to the current GDP. The case where we have the non-oil sector to contribute about ninety four point three four percent ninety four point three four percent to GDP. Then the oil sector that means you should pay more attention to where the majority is, which is uh, the non oil. And among this non oil, ICT has actually done wonderfully well. The government should pay attention on, on ICT, we pay attention to transport, we pay attention uh, to manufacturing. Well, you're correct to say, I mean, the um, oil sector, uh, you know, contributes not so much to the GDP, but you also agree with me that the oil sector is a major foreign exchange earner for the country, and that is quite significant, isn't it? It is significant in terms of revenue. But revenue, we have all seen what is, what is that, where has revenue taken us to? So revenue is not a fine. We need revenue. But if you pay attention to other sectors of the economy, we will generate more than but, this but revenue. But that's not that to say that government doesn't pay attention to these sectors that you're talking about. They are perhaps the most taxed. There's a lot of, so many, you know better, so many taxes are in those sectors. So yes, government is paying attention to them. That's why they are so heavily taxed. We, we, I get what, exactly what you are saying. Exactly. But we are talking about employment. Because when people are not employed, even when we are growing, if government pays attention on oil sector, leaving other sector, we have a, even if we are growing as in terms of GDP, that will lead to what they call jobless growth. You realize that people are leaving their job and the economy is growing. That's called jobless growth in economics. And we don't need that at this point. So what we need, if you, as you are tackling the oil, oil and gas sector, as you are trying to make revenue from oil and, oil, and, oil and gas, then don't let us kill other sector of the economy. So that we don't have what they call the Dutch disease. Well, what we have been battling with since oil was discovered in Nigeria in commercial quantity is what we call the Dutch disease or the abundance curse. A case where you discover a natural resource in, in, in abundance, in, in large quantity, then you concentrate on it and leave other sector of the economy. That, that was a time in this country that the agricultural sector was the largest earner of foreign, uh, of foreign, uh, of foreign uh, exchange in this country. It was the largest employer of labor. So what happened? What, what did we get wrong? There was a time the manufacturing sector of this, of this economy was doing fantastically well. So why can't we go back to those areas? Why can't we revamp our agricultural sector and then the manufacturing sector 
so that the, the over dependence on oil will reduce. These are sectors that cannot that can not only generate employment, but can also generate the so-called revenue we are looking at in terms of oil. Fine, oil has been giving us revenue. It has been the largest, uh, about 80% of our uh, of, of um, um, source of uh, forex and about 60% of our revenue in terms of uh, um, uh, in terms of total revenue that we have generated. But if you look at it in terms of job, em in terms of employment, it has not done well. It will not do well compared to other sectors of the economy that are job elastic, and that is my point. That. Uh, Mr. Chizie, uh, let me yes, take you back to a question that um, Ayo asked earlier about production, Nigeria being a, a consum you know, consuming country and not producing anything, and yet we have so many young people who are out of work. It makes me think about China. Almost every part of the world now produces almost everything from China. And the reason they put forward for that is that there is cheap labor in China. What is militating against Nigeria that has this, well, I wouldn't describe it as cheap, but at least it has this labor lurking around, doing nothing, which can be tapped by Nigerians as well as other nations to grow our economy. Well, I think that uh, the level in Nigeria is not that is not is not that exp uh, too high, relatively. I think that is what is what is important is that uh, you know what values do our workers bring to the table. I think that's what is uh, that's what is important, you know. But uh, what makes us not to be productive? And that, that it's a, a multiplicity of factors, you know. So you, you have issues like the, the environment itself. You have infrastructure. I just talked about power supply. You know, you have you have fuel and so on. You have you have insecurity. And so when you have all this, you know, then um, you know you would you're not being productive, you know. So you, and then you have a mentality, you know, that just uh, you want to you want to consume what you don't produce, and uh, and, 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 and and vice versa. So I think that um, you do the challenges, you know. We we have to we need to reorientate our mindset, you know, to you know to uh, make us again to begin to think production. But we have to get back to there's something like the revenue allocation uh, formula. That it's all mismanaged, you know. Where you the resources that are crude from the region is taken to the center, and there's contestation about who gets what. Then that undermines the production. We have to get back to a situation where it was before. We had it post independence, where if you produce, you earn your revenue, and you pay tax for the center. And so we need to tear down the, the power at the center, reduce the authority at the center. As far as I'm concerned, that is the essence of this restructuring the Nigerian economy. Well, um, it's, it's still a little befuddling and fuzzy to many people, you know, listening to all of this conversation this morning. But, Mr. Mabinori, to, you, you spoke about micro, small, and medium enterprises, and for me, that's one of the most exciting conversations to have, because micro, small, and medium enterprises are responsible for the most jobs, about 70%, if not more, employment that people get in the country. If they are unable to you know, operate as well or as, as productively and profitably as they should or desire to, what it translates to uh, is job losses. I think uh, you know, uh, the employment figures are going to increase, and we cannot do anything about the poverty figures. If you would make recommendations, where do we go from here? Now we are talking about the GDP figures falling in this third quarter. I don't know what is going to happen in the quarter ahead, given the NBC, the same NBC's report about multidimensional poverty in various parts of the country. What should happen now if we're to improve these GDP figures? Um, thank, thank you for talking on uh, this SME. It's actually a sector I'm very much interested in as an acad uh, academician. Um, <clears throat> because the informal sector, anywhere in the world, uh, is the engine room of any nation. It is a, it is a sector that can contribute. And, 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 and SME cuts across all sectors of the economy. If you go to ICT, transport, there's no sector of the economy that you go that you won't see. Uh, um, SMEs, and that is why we most time always say that the oil and gas is not uh, a job elastic um, sector because you rarely find 
uh, huge SMEs around that area. Uh, the SME that you want to do, uh, if you want to do anything small scale there, that's when we want to go to modular refinery and what have you. They call it illegal refinery and we destroyed our regs and what have you. But that means SME in that sector is not uh, uh, um, encouraged to, to very large SMEs, except some other services around the, the sector. But if you come to non -oil, oil sector of the economy, you will see SMEs uh, spread across the nation or across the sector. And that's that, that is why we call them um, um, the, the job providers. So a case where government gives the provide what they call uh, an enabling, envi enabling environment for SMEs. So you might just, just take from, for, we have about 40 million Nigerians in SME as well right now, as we speak right now. So let's just imagine that government empowers them to pay um, uh, taxes. So a, a case where out of, out of these 40 million, let's even empower 10 million of them, each of them paying a tax of 1 million naira annually. To look at one million in ten million places, that is huge revenue for government. So that's what we're saying that over dependence on oil, we can divert from. Uh, that's what we talk about um, diversification of the economy, restructuring, and what have you. We can divert our attention from oil to a, an economy as simple as small as the SMEs. If SMEs and is, is, is they have what they call enabling environment to thrive, we we'll have a massive revenue from from tax that we we'll get from them. Even aside that, the employment that they will create. So imagine government creating additional 10 million employees, I mean, uh, uh, SME, or SME owners, and each of them employing five people. We have created 10 million jobs for these SMEs, and each of them have created additional five, I mean, five, um, that's, uh, five million uh, jobs being created again. So by the time you look at it, you will realize that the economy will surely boom. A case where we're having 133 million Nigerians uh, in poverty line is, it's, it's what they call um, reserve army. If anything happens, even the Nigerians are actually very resilient and easy to lead, this is enough to set any nation ablaze. Because a case where we have over, we have your youth, 65% of your youth are, are of your population are below 35 years old. And you are having a, 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 a whopping 63% on um, 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 poverty rate in the economy. It is alarming. And come 20, uh, the, by the time this, the, the NBA, Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, releases the, 20, the Q4, um, 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 GDP cut, um, um, statistics, which we will realize that it will be worse than what we have right now because we are, we are moving towards the electionary period. Q3, I mean, Q4 and Q1, that is cut, um, 2021 first quarter, we surely have something lower than this because it is a period where there will be so much money in the economy where they will be doing nothing because this is election, electionary period. We all know so many our activities that, that, that revolve around the election in Nigeria. So, well, that's what we can say to a very large extent. The, the design of NARA that CBN is doing will, to an extent, tame some of these activities, but not just for a, for, a, for a short period of time. We're looking at the long run effect. What happens in the long run? The, are you saying by 2027, again, we want to do the election, just through the design, another currency to also call the uh, vote buying and uh, some illegal activities coming, in, coming on in, around the election? So there, there are more to this. There are more to this thing. That's what we want government to be more deliberate. And again, there should be a, an harmony between the fiscal sector and the monetary sector. We have seen that there is this, a huge, they're they are like pillars apart, the monetary sector and then the real sector. And when, on, when both of them are not together, it will be a, an issue. A case where the real sector, the, which is basically being led by the manufacturing sector, cannot conveniently source funds from the monetary sector in terms of uh, going, going to a bank and say, okay, I need this fund. Cost of fund is this has, has increased. And a case where cost of funds are not available for manufacturing sector, we surely have what we have right now. Manufacturing sector, manufacturing sector is another uh, huge uh, um, job elastic um, um, sector. So a case where manufacturing sector is contrasting, um, other sectors are contrasting, we surely have what we have right now. So that's why we want more government to be more deliberate in terms of their fiscal policies. Let's even, our monetary policy has um, tightened the, uh, the, 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 most of the monetary policies tools. Okay. Then what do we have on the part of uh, our fiscal? Mm. Do we have uh, a contractionary or expansionary policy? Well, now the economy I, I, is contracting. I, I, I say, my my apologies, uh, uh, Mr. I'm, Magnori, policy, I, 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 I'm pretty sure that, I mean, you know, some authorities will understand what you're saying quite well, but I'd like you to drill down to those who may not understand all the um, economic jargons that you're speaking, pardon my English. Uh, but let's speak down. You've talk, spoken about the SME sector that is well known and that is expected to be organized. How about the SME sector that is largely unknown in suburban Nigeria and rural areas that only eat a living for a day? Literally just sustenance living. 
they do business just for the day, earn a day's pay, and then the next day they continue the grind the same way. They don't work in a day, they don't eat. So how are they factored into all of these conversations that you're having with us? As I said earlier, what we need is enabling environment for them to survive. Nigerians are very hardworking. Nigerians are very resilient. Nigerians are very uh, smart and highly talented. So what, what we need is government creating environment. Look at what Nigerians have done in the music industry to them, for themselves. Look at what they have done in, in the entertainment industry at life, that is the, uh, the music the, uh, and the movie. So if they can on their own do this, imagine if they have support of government as the Nollywood, the Bollywood have, uh, I'm sorry, Hollywood and then the Bollywood have support of government. So that is why I, I, I had sometimes that one of the uh, aspirants was saying that they would create the, uh, a, 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 the same holy, holy wood that we have in Nigeria. If we can have that, we have a movie, movie uh, estate or a movie um, uh, academy, or sorry, uh, a village where you can go and shoot whatever movie you want to shoot. And these, are, these are sectors that would drive the economy in terms of growth, in terms of employment, and in terms of putting food on people's table. Because a case where people are hungry, a case where people cannot access food on a daily basis, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are aiming towards Bermuda, the Bermuda Triangle economically. So a case where people cannot feed themselves, and we have about more than about 80% of Nigerians eat on eat on the, based on what they produce on a daily basis. So a case where they can't, uh, the, the next meal is not guaranteed. That's a problem. That's why I'm saying government should be deliberate about this, and that's why 2023 election should be very very. Uh, should be well, we all should be concerned because we are looking at about we are, we are talking about our future here. So any before you cast your vote next election, you should look at okay, what is this person promising? If you are saying you are moving from production to consumption, I mean from consumption to production, how are you doing it? Show us the process, show us the, the way. So it's not just by rhetoric that we have been hearing over the time. Politicians have come, they've told us all, all, all manner of things, but what are you bringing to the table? What are you doing differently? But it is not a crime that Nigeria is, is a consuming nation. The crime there is that we are not producing what we are consuming. And after producing what we are consuming, then we should also have talk about our consumption pattern by consuming what we are producing. Okay. There was a, a time, sometime, can I, can I continue? Uh, just land on that point very quickly because we're running out of time. There was a time I was in South Africa, and um, um, a friend of mine that went to meet, that wanted to buy uh, some, wanted to buy some uh, designer cool chairs, and he said, no, don't go for this, go for those one locally made here. And I said, why? He said, because here in Africa, in, in South Africa, you want to buy this. He, said, he was just telling me why, giving me reasons why I should consume what they are produced. And I, I eventually went for it. So we should have our own uh, orientation to change. Because some of us are, they are well, we depend so much on this foreign product. That's why it's okay. my shoe. It's right. an Italian shoe. When yeah. you want to have a bad, a bad shoe that will also compete. Well, don't worry. Italian I'm pretty sure that, so. that that's going to be a, you know, a sing-song soon. After all, the governor of Anambra State has promised us that. But Mr. Chizia, in closing, what, what would be you know, your recommendation uh, for us as a people? Government, I mean, you've given all the recommendations. What would you recommend for the people? If you can do that in 20 seconds. Well, for the people, well, it's a sign to make sure that uh, you look at your expenditure pattern as a person and see what you can postpone. There are certain things, certain non-essentials probably people have gone on when the times were good. Uh, maybe it's time to look at them again and then maybe make some substitutions. Right? It's, it's, it's mm -hmm. possible. But I think that uh, the hardship is there, it's knocking on our doors, and uh, it's not something that will be solved uh, today or tomorrow. So we need to get things right, uh, make sure that uh, we adopt policies and we are consistent in okay. trying to get those policies implemented. Yes. Unfortunately, you, some of those essential commodities such as fuel are only increasing in prices. <laughs> As Alara yes. said the other time, Merry Christmas, Nigeria. Yes. Chize, Boniface Chizia and um, Ola Dotsu Mabinori, both economists. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being a part thank of our conversation you. this morning. Thank Truly you. appreciate you. So we're back in a moment to take on the next conversation. Please stay with us.